Hi, this is Nancy Heinz Glazer. We're starting off a wonderful set of programs to interview important people, artists, wonderful creative types here in Fallbrook. And we're here at the library at Fallbrook High and glad to be here. Um, I am lucky enough to have two wonderful artists. The name of the program is going to be All Art Always. Uh, Got to have it always. And I'm lucky enough to have uh, Rich Sturgalls and Leslie Sweetland from the Green Art House. How are you? Fantastic. Oh, wow. Happy to be here. <laughs> good, good. And I think part of the reason I wanted you here is your mission when you came to Fallbrook to begin your art school and uh, um, retreat uh, is that you had a specific mission in mind. Uh, Les, I'm going to ask you that one. What's your mission at the Green Art House? To provide a place that supports art and artists and to do it as green as possible and keep our footprint as small as possible. And you recycle what? I know you do recycle lots of things. But. We, we recycle plastic bottles. We, uh, all of the soiled water from watercolor painting and acrylic painting goes into buckets outside to evaporate. And so we're not putting any of the heavy metals that are in the pigment down the drain, or in our case, into the septic system. Um, we have a service that comes for all of the paint rags and the soiled solvents, and they will come at and pick it up and then they properly dispose of it. The rags are incinerated and the um, soiled solvents are actually cleaned, filtered, and put back into jugs and sold in the hardware stores. Easy for you to say. Yeah. That's, a, that's an intensive process, but it's your commitment yep. to the earth, the planet, and the art, I know. Still yes. do good art, but do it the right way. Yep. Eco-friendly, I think, is the term that's on your website. Take yes. care of the planet. Yeah, and you know, I, I think it's always so interesting to find how people join forces. You guys are in partnership at the Green Art House. Um, how did you find each other or get here? It's, you didn't just plop down from story. the sky. Uh, I'm going to you with that one. Uh oh, Rich. all right. Um, I did a demo and a critique at the Fallbrook Art Association one night. And after the demo, we did the critique and, and people brought up their paintings and I talked about them and helped them through possibly some of the situations that they were having little difficulties with. She was there and she brought in a pencil drawing, self-portrait. Self-portrait. And it was beautiful. But there were a few things that I thought could raise her from an advanced person to more of a master. And um, she worked on that, and that's how we met. She started taking some of my classes. We got a little bit uh, a little bit further along with the, the studies, and she walked up to me and said, I want to be in galleries. And I said, do you have any clue what you just asked me? Because <laughs> I'm going to be really tough on her now. Yeah. And she did it. She right. did it. And, and uh, she studied. She put the work in. And how many galleries were you in at that point? Four. Four? Three, four galleries. Three, three or four. So, I, I mean, I, I was very impressed. And then, then we started talking about us doing our own classes somewhere because I was renting a space. And I thought, why don't we get a building and do this ourselves? Well, and I wasn't teaching. <laughs> I wasn't teaching yet. It, start, it started out as we were in the back room of a gallery and we went to Temecula to see if there was spaces we could rent there. And they wanted this ungodly amount of rent. So well, I said, well, we'll, we'll do this ourselves. Well, you had a big dream. I remember you told me with a lot of people start out and they just say, hey, you know, hey kids, my uncle's bought, got a bar and let's put on a show it, in the old Mickey Rooney movie. Right. But you got, and so you had a very grand scheme and I then did, changed did, it through time. Well, it, it went from real. this, it went, yes, it went from this one room to 20 acres with all kinds your of mind. unique right. uh, places for people all over the world to come and stay yeah. and create with us. You know, I was going to 
go to the Plain Graveyard in Arizona, chop off B-52 nose and bring it back and make it an apartment for people to stay in. You know, a caboose, all that kind of fun stuff. The well, The containers. Your cargo container. Well, we, where are you now? Well, wait, wait, wait. Let <laughs> yeah, me, let I know. Me, let Keep me get, going. We, we got to the point where the architect, we sat down with him, and he went over what we needed. And I said, all right, you know, uh, money's no object. Do your thing. Well, we were thinking maybe three million. He said 11 million. Money came, became an object. And then money became <laughs> yeah, an object. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> so, so we're like, okay, uh, we, we can't do this. We can't do this. So we, we did roll it back a little bit. And uh, we ended up going to a couple of places. But we, we ended up over at Pala Mesa Resort there. We leased a, a building from them. Mm -hmm. They've been fantastic to us. We love them there. They love us there. Um, and we run everything out of that. And, and we're mm -hmm. still as eco-friendly as we possibly can be. And mm -hmm. it's to, I mean, I think I found you somehow, I'm trying to even remember when I first met you, but it's so nestled in the middle of a golf course, uh, of all things, uh. and there, the back road has to go past the ninth hole, I'm not quite sure. And I just, I, it was the whole idea of getting there that really impressed me too. Yeah. And you guys had been at another location and came here, mm -hmm. if right. I recall, right? You were at another, mm -hmm. Resort or a golf course? Yes. Yeah. When and so, well, first of all, when did you come to Fallbrook and take me back to when you were there at San Luis Rey? When did you move here to Fallbrook? Almost seven. No, November of 2017. So we you, officially opened December 1st of 2017. So you're coming upon on five. Five years. Yes. Yeah. And before that, how long were you at San Luis Rey? You were there for a short time? Three months, very Three short months. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> very short time. Moved out before the fire, uh, so we just, somebody yeah. was on your yeah. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we just, we had a much better opportunity at Palo Mesa, and we took it. Yeah. And you've been there, and so I know that one of the things we talked about, and I met you, I guess I just said, oh, I'll take pictures or something. I'm not quite sure. And I had such a good time. I wanted to keep going there, and that's really, I knew that you were on to something and both excellent at what you do, because I never felt funny, uh, and I, I always felt welcome there, and you've good. entertained a lot of good students, new students, old students, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. How do they get to you? Uh, a lot of word of mouth, believe it or not. We get a you. lot of word of mouth, um, and then we, we advertise social medias. Website um, pulls a bunch in. Website pulls what, a bunch what's in. Your, please give us your website so everybody hears what it is. It's www something. Thegreenarthouse.org. Org. Org. O -R -G. Okay. And you can go there and, and look at the whole schedule, look at what we offer. Sign um, up for I class. love when everybody comes in and introduces themselves, talks to us a little bit, uh, gets to know us, and audits the class, audits mm -hmm. everything we're doing because. Uh, you need to see it. Artists are very visual, right? So the, when they're in there, they feel the peace. It's a sanctuary. When everybody comes in there, everybody gets creative. We, and we're back behind the driving range, and we get a lot of privacy, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's not loud there. There's not a lot of foot traffic. There's not a lot of, you know, just noise. It's just very pleasant. And uh, so we love being back there with everybody. So if, if we have anybody come in, I, I love when they come in to introduce themselves and audit the place because they usually end up signing and coming in. So can people come for a tour? So if we had some mm -hmm. interested student artists, could we set up a tour also? Oh, yeah. You, do you teach just, all ages? Just drop in. Yeah? We do. Okay. I, I would uh, I would say uh, you know nothing younger than seven. I mean I I have I have a 96 year old mm -hmm. who comes and takes classes from me, and she's got so much fire in her belly. I, I, she she outruns me mm -hmm. in in the room, and and it's like I I can't keep up with her sometimes. She's she's such a a beautiful person, but. We, we've taken in a lot of people, and, and over the years, mm -hmm. I, I've been teaching for over 20 years, and I'm probably in that a uh, little bit over 400 students over the years. 
And every one of them, every one of them, I've been very fortunate enough to be just honored. And it's a privilege to be able to share what I know with all of these people. They, they come to us because they want to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they want to get better. And we have great and you're teachers just there. there. To help them. Yeah, uh, you do. You have a variety of teachers. You have sculpture. You have uh, everything. I think. Mm -hmm. I well, I, what I want to do is be able to take a break, and when we come back, if it's okay, I want you to go into the entire list of what you, what it is you oh, provide. Yeah. So don't go Love away. To. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Rich and Leslie at the Green Art House. The Fallbrook Art Association is an Artists for Artists organization. Visit our gallery at 300 North Brandon Street in Fallbrook, California to see fine art exhibitions from some of Southern California's most talented creators. Exhibitions change regularly, so visit our website to find out the latest news. If you appreciate art, you will love visiting the Fallbrook Art Association. Okay, and welcome back. We're here with Rich and Leslie of the Green Art House. This is Nancy. And now we're going to talk, we talked a little bit about how you got to Fallbrook and where you are and where you landed. And I want to talk about the classes that you provide and your history a little bit. Because the way you met is interesting through teacher, you know, student, uh, but you're both from different places. So, but let me start with the classes you teach, and then we'll get into the history. Is that okay? Give me, of course, give me the full rundown of everything you do there, if you can do that. All right. How I teach my classes, I, I have all mediums. It doesn't matter what they want to bring in, whatever they feel comfortable with. Uh, so, painting, so they painting get with. to bring in their own desire. Yeah. Okay. You, you get to teach bring it in all. drawing, yeah. painting. It and doesn't matter. I discuss the fundamentals. You know, I'm, I'm very much so on value, temperature, and chroma. That's the saturation or dulling of yeah. a color. Uh, then we talk about edges and shapes and composition and texture and scale and everything else down the line. What any, anybody wants to paint is up to them. So we got oil, acrylic, watercolor, pastels. Dry pastels. Uh, dry pastels. Um, we have sculpting. Teacher comes in on Saturdays and everybody goes in there and sculpts away and has a lot of fun. Um, and then any other uh, mediums that people surprise me with, which is kind of neat. I have an abstract artist who comes in with things that she glues to the canvas. I, I don't do that type of work, yeah. but it's really fascinating to me and I help her with the composition. Okay, so even so, if it isn't something your color. hands on with, you can guide in a different, based yes. on your long-term experience, yes. the, the, the composition. Fun, yeah. The fundamentals yeah. are the same no matter what the medium is. Yeah. yeah, and so do you do everything also, or do you have a specialty, Leslie, so uh, me, that you like to work me with? Me personally, yeah. I do all of it, but I teach the dry pastels. They're more my passion. Tell me what that is. I don't even know what a dry pastel, you mean the, the chalk that we dry, have, the, the art chalk? Chalk contains limestone. Oh. Okay. Dry pastels are sticks of pure pigment. It's the same pigment that's in his oil colors, his watercolors, his acrylic. It's the same, and it's got a very small amount of a binder in it to make the much, stick and hold it together. Much better quality. But it is pure pigment. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes mm -hmm. it different from chalk, which is limestone and And not so much it's of one anything. more uh, corrosive to the environment? Um, I don't know about chalk and limestone. I have no idea what those do to well, the environment. Maybe somebody else tell them. But the pigments, the same, any of the pigments, no matter what binder they're put in to make whichever medium, the cadmiums are a heavy metal. The cobalts are a heavy mm -hmm. metal. That's why the liquids don't go down the drain. That's why the rags go into the bin that, that we have hauled away and properly destroyed. Okay, um, so I, you know, I think what I hear is your full service. If you, if you were a service station, you could do it all. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. And, you pretty know, much. I've been there a number of times and watched the class, and I, I really learned something every time I participated in the book uh, with Mary oh, the and Spiders, who yeah. came and did a, a workshop. 
and that was a lot of fun. And then I mm -hmm. had somebody else I had work with me on it, mm -hmm. two other people. Mm -hmm. And it's almost done. That was, uh, it's almost done. But I think what I like about all of the artists in Fallbrook, I will have to say we have so many and they're hidden and uh, maybe you like it that way. But I think really what I like is everybody wants to mix it up and try to get along and share with each other. Mm -hmm. we, we need to. I have got to do it and yeah. you know because it's the fabric of our community and our young people you know we're starting to do a little work with that at the Fallbrook Art Association so graphic novel artwork and you know anime and all the things that freak me out because they're computer but we mm -hmm. have to get with it you know in order to carry it on for the young people but I think what's so interesting is your education so Leslie I'm going to start with you first because I think you represent somebody so accomplished and how did you start taking a class you've been drawing since you were a kid but I've, you're self-taught pretty much I've oil painted since I was 10 um, I did take a couple of classes from a gal that had an art supply store with a classroom in the back she pretty much taught adults but I got to slide in um, I started with her, then just did it on my own for a long time. Then, typical of a lot of people, I put it down because life got in the way. Um, I picked it up again when I was in my 30s. I actually finally took my first drawing class. And uh, I've taken a few community college courses. Um, and, and I, I showed up. This. I showed up. Yeah, I showed up at one class, and the instructor looked at what I was starting, and she's like, "Why are you here?" Because I'm missing something. I need to learn something. And when I went to his critique, and he actually critiqued my drawing, it's like somebody I can learn from. So and he is really my formal education. Your art mentor. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, he gave me the words to describe what I intuitively knew. So if there's kids out there, if you know how to draw a tree and you want to know how to draw a tree more, just keep at it and eventually you'll get to just, where you need to go. Just apparently. keep doing just it. Just keep doing just it. Just keep yeah. doing it. Don't listen to the naysayers. Um, one of my, my favorite phrases, it's my phrase, but a critique is one person's opinion. Take from it what will help you grow and throw the rest of it in the rubbish bin. It doesn't matter. You don't mince words, Leslie. That's why I like I don't. you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Moving on from that. That's right. You know, and you're, you're completely different because you were really long studied and traveled. And I, I, I don't know how many minutes we have left, but tell us about the Institute. I, I went to the Academy of Art in Chicago. Okay. And I did a three-year program there. Uh, learned learned a lot, but you know, getting into the commercial business once I got out is where I really learned a lot more. So you, you know, can crank it out by now, huh? I, I can. Okay. I can. Uh, you know, you have to meet a deadline. If you get a job on Tuesday and they want it Thursday, you know, you don't sleep. You you do. You you have to get it done. So um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot in the streets. I learned a lot from all my fellow illustrators and my buddies. You know, we all, we all learned together. And then it was just a matter of painting and painting and painting and painting. I probably painted, you know, 12 hours a day for years. Seven days a week. You have, get. that's it. Anytime you want to do something, you have to spend time at yeah. it. I think, well, uh, mm -hmm. you Any, know. Anybody can bang on a piano. Oh, no, you don't know me. I've been told yeah. I could learn instruments. I'm sorry, there's just some of us that can't. I yeah. proved them all wrong, and I'm still a nice person. But, you know, I look at your art here, and this is one of the things about you, is you do follow sort of an old master's kind of, there's gusto in there. And, and when you travel and see art, you get to see, and I mean, you really do have that old master's quality and the, the you know, reflection and lighting and... I know lighting's a huge part of it. Oh yeah, right? light, light's everything. You know, I, I make this silly joke in class all the time. You know, if there was no light, we'd all be sculptors. Oh, that's a good one. So, <laughs> that's a good so one. So if you think about it. it that's a good one. So, 
But yeah, anyway, I'm just glad you're around mm -hmm. because you uh, provide us another opportunity. We have a wonderful artist. Right. Fabric Art Association's been around 65 years, I think, uh, in incorporation, and they continue to exist, which blows my mind. You know, Fabric Arts, Inc., so many artists with their studios, and I hope we have a studio tour again. Uh, We'd love someday. to have you back yeah. up. Anyway, um, is there anything you'd like to impart to our viewers, which we know is going to grow, the viewership is growing. Is there anything you want to say about what Fallbrook's been able to do with you, for you, and uh, by you? Fallbrook for the arts? Mm -hmm. um, you know what, I, I, I love the fact that it's a small community. Coming from Chicago, I, I, I love being put in an area where I kind of, I, I know a lot of artists. And it's nice that we can all get together and having a show like this, which we are thankful for being on, mm -hmm. um, Very much so. can get us all together. We should be a community. You know, it, it should be something that we all strive to work together with. And I, I still think that Fabra can be a destination, not just an art, you right, know, just a place come for the weekend it. and then leave mm -hmm. yeah. sort of thing. I think I think uh, we have everything here, and we have a lot of actually alum who alumni have come back. So, anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this brief interview and continue to stay with us. Thanks to the students here at Fallbrook High and Mr. Herring, we're having an opportunity for a forum. So, come back, see us again, and take a look around you at the art that's in your life, and you don't even know it. Goodbye.